Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Cropper here. Uh, as per the recent statements I've heard ubiquitously that ethics is not scientific, um, ethics as a branch of philosophy, ethics as a discipline is not science. Um, and and uh, Richard Dawkins himself said um, ethics propositions in ethics, I believe, e ethical propositions or whichever ethical statements can't be, or morality can't be tested, he said. Uh, there's no way to test and confirm or deny. Is this true? Is ethics scientific or not? And if it's not scientific, what the heck is it? So let's look into this a bit. Now what would we mean by scientific? Scientific in, in this context would mean uh, I submit objectively provable. That's what I submit we would want science to mean. Uh, provable in objective fact and reality by observation. Now we just need a definition of what ethics is, but let's go ahead and get a, a confirmation on what science is. Scientific, adjective, relating to or based on science, systematic, methodical. Great. Science. The intellectual and practical activity encompassing the systematic study of the structure and behavior of the physical and natural world through, the observation, through observation and experiment. So it's the natural world through observation and experiment. Uh, to an organized, systematically organized body of knowledge on any subject. Systematically organized body of knowledge. Now we can do that. But you could do the science of philosophy. If you, did, if you ask me, science is a philosophy, but if you organize the information in philosophy, you had Derrida, Nietzsche, Kant, and everybody else uh, in a series of books and had it organized, you could call that a science according to this definition. I reject that. A science is something whose propositions are testable in reality and whose propositions have to say something about reality. They have to be inferences. So you couldn't have any given body of knowledge organized in any way and call that a science. I reject that. A science would have to make some sort of assertions about reality that could be tested. And those assertions would have to be something other than uh, Jack Derrida wrote uh, this or that book. That's not what I mean by science. The science has to make statements that are integrations. Okay? Just like this, uh, physical sciences make statements like the law of gravity or, or uh, E equals MC squared. Now, how is ethics scientific? Well, what does ethics deal with? That's the first question we'll have to get on the table, isn't it? And I simply submit that ethics is behavior. How should we behave? Uh, the second mirror side of that, the foil side to uh, personal behavior is political behavior. How should we behave with regards to other humans? But the first um, subject of ethics is how should we behave in reality? How should the individual behave? in reality. And ethics is a discipline that would apply to you even if you were living completely alone on a desert island. That's a hint to its nature. Um, ethics is not collective. Ethics is not how we bend the will of the individual um, to you know, sub submit it to society or whatever. You would need ethics on a desert island more so on a desert island. And the reason for that is because ethics is the code of behavior for man. An ethical course of action would be actions which preserve and benefit your life. Ethics is the preservation and, and beneficence of your life. That's what ethics is. It is the science of what things harm an individual human and what things help them. Just write that down on you know, a, you know, a little postcard and put it above your computer. Okay, Ethics is the science that uh, tells humans how to act to uh, help and benefit their own lives. Uh, now that can mean just preservation of their life, but then all we would need is a jail cell and a little bit of food every day. Uh, but Aristotle said uh, a, a swallow, a little bird flying around does not make a summer, nor does a summer's day make the whole season. 
Um, yes, and you can't just say you had this one little teeny aspect of summer and therefore that is summer itself. One aspect of being a human being is to be alive and breathing and walking around. That is not all of it though. Ethics is the science of all of it. Ethics is the science of how do you live as a human being, including the nature uh, of the fact that you're a rational animal, that you have emotions, uh, that you have a potential of fear, uh, and happiness and uh, anger and rage and all those possibilities and what is the goal of human life? What is the purpose of life? Uh, anybody who knows the Nicotian Ethics uh, by Aristotle knows the, the purpose of human life is happiness because everything aims at happiness everything aims at happiness everything aims at happiness everything. You don't save up happiness to buy anything but you save up money for plane tickets to go to Bermuda so you'll be happy. You give your money to charity so you'll be happy. You uh, go to sleep at night so you'll feel better. You wake up in the morning and get up out of bed and do something so you'll be happier than if you lay in bed. Everything you do is for happiness, said Aristotle and he, he recognized that fact well over 2,000 years ago. High time that we catch up with his realization. So. If ethics is the method of, or, or the course of action that leads to a human's most human life, the most human that a human's life could be, would be a, a life uh, dictated by ethical injunction. Uh, so here's the problem. If ethics is a science, science is objective and testable. And ethical injunctions uh, benefit human life if they're carried out. How do we test those ethical injunctions? It would seem to be unethical to run an experiment to see whether or not this system harms or helps human life. That would seem to be unethical. Like for example, let's say um, I, I look at Hegel's writings, and I look at Kant's writings, and I look at Marx's writings, and I say, my God, this would be a disaster. I, I, I say, Hegel's idea of this, this supreme state as the purpose of everything, that every individual is subordinate to the state as part of an organic whole. And Kant's idea that we can't know reality and there's no external reality to prove anything with and we have to have ultimately faith all the time, every instant. Uh, and you can't even have faith in that because you don't even know if you know anything about anything. And Marx's idea that everything in, in history is economics. Okay, so all we have to do is devise some altruistic way to take our current system and turn it into uh, the next step in economics as per his fantasy. Put those three together and say what would happen if we ran a society based on their ideas. Now you couldn't do it because it would be very, very unethical. And, and, and thought experiments don't really get you anywhere. Uh, you have That's what experiments are, is to go out into the world and do it. Uh, so what are you going to do? How are you going to test the ethical injunctions from Hegel uh, and Kant and Marx. How are you going to run those systems? And it's very simply history. You're going to run their ideas in history. History is the laboratory of ethics. Ethics is studied in history, it's learned in history, it's demonstrated in history. Uh, not that it would be impossible to test it, you see. It has been tested. That's the whole point. And it, you you wouldn't want to test that because that's immoral. You can't take a, a, a province of uh, you know a million people and run the experiment of communis communism on them ethically. Uh, you would be a warmongering dictator, a bloodthirsty thug if you did that. So you wouldn't be a scientist running an experiment. You'd be destroying human lives. Uh, that's why you can't run experiments in ethics because it would be unethical. But what are some of the injunctions of ethics? that you should uh, be independent, uh, you should be rational, 